Hi, let's talk a little bit about the difference between rules, social contracts, and treatment agreements, which we're going to use the term social contract and treatment agreement synonymously. So a lot of people think they're really different, but they do have lots of things in common. First of the first being is its shared purpose. And really the purpose of both of those things is to develop positive behaviors to help function in a group. It helps keep uh, helps everybody keep the purpose of what is happening, which in our classroom is learning and also feeling safe and feeling valued and um, not having their feelings and and rights violated in the classroom. When done well, rules and social contracts um, should be explicitly stated behaviors. It should be very clear. We should all know what they are, have a shared understanding of what they are, and it should be um, something that we all know. Now, there are hidden rules and there are hidden social norms. Uh, those are not ideal. So we want to make everything as explicit as we possibly can. And finally, both of those things have consequences when they are broken. A lot of people think social contracts, treatment agreements don't have consequences. They absolutely do. They are just different than the kinds of consequences that happen when rules are broken. So um, let's look at again, let's let's look at how they're different now. So those consequences for rules are punishments. A lot of people don't like the word punishment, but it is actually a punishment. When you break a rule, something undesirable to you happens as a result of breaking that rule. So that is the definition of a punishment right there. It is something undesirable. It may be losing something or getting something, like uh, getting hit would be a punishment. That would be getting something. Obviously we're not hitting our students um, or taking away something, taking away a privilege or something that we like is also a punishment. So it is a punishment type thing um, and because we want to avoid it happening in the first place, or if it happens, avoid it happening ever again, we will choose to, theoretically, choose to engage in the positive behaviors to avoid that undesirable situation. And then we will develop the habits of positive behaviors to help us, us and help us get along in a group. Um, and so that is a good thing, right? So it is a teacher-centered practice because teachers decide on the rules or they still decide if they're letting students make the rules. Do you hear that? They're letting students make the rules. So they are in charge of the rules and they are in charge of deciding when the rule is broken and they are in charge of the consequence or the punishment. So that is a teacher-centered approach. A lot of people think teacher-centered is bad. Teacher-centered is not bad. Remember, we're helping our students develop positive behaviors. That's a good thing. The difference between teacher-centered and student-centered is that there's just different beliefs on how we help our students be the best they can be. So I, I think that teacher-centered has a negative connotation, but it's really not. It's just a different belief about how we make these things happen in our classrooms. So let's go back to students. Uh, so I mean, so, sorry, so, well, the student-centered approach is a social contract because it's focusing more at the student level. So it is always collaboratively developed. The teacher still facilitates that. So there is teacher control in it. It's just not, it's not 100% a free-for-all free because for the teacher does have to manage it. But what happens when those expectations are violated is that the relationships are damaged. Who decides when a relationship is damaged? the person in the relationship decides when the relationship is damaged. And therefore, it's coming from the student, and that makes it a student-centered approach. So the relationship damaged is the consequence. Um, and because people, according to this belief, crave connection, that is also an undesirable thing. It's just not coming from the outside. Um, and so the focus is on repairing the relationships. How do we repair the relationships? with positive behaviors. So I'm gonna have you pause, think about this, see if you have any questions, and then we're gonna go on to creating our treatment agreements.